Hey everybody, I'm Fada Wolf. Um, before we get started, this is, all, this is pretty similar to my absolute last slide with all this info. So yeah, get out your cameras or really quickly type the notes. If you write down nothing else, just get that top link, which is bit.ly slash Fada dash Cascadia.js dash 2018. That's bit.ly slash Fada dash Cascadia.js dash 2018. That's all these slides sends that one link uh, in PDF format if you want to follow along. All right? I want to do, I do that because I notice we're all speaking really fast because we're trying to cram everything we can into 25 minutes. I will try and do the same. All right, so my talk is called Teaching the Sighted to Touch and Feel a Bit More, or a Bit More Empathy. Uh, the React Native Braille six key input NPM package that our team at the Circus Inc. created for a PSU department called Universal Design Lab and uh, for an app they wanted created called Unify UEB Prep, which UEB stands for Unified English Braille, which I'll get into. And that's a picture of the package in action right up there in the top center. Uh, so about me, my name is Fada Wolf, that is my legal name. Uh, I'm a web and mobile app developer in JavaScript at the Circus Inc. Uh, that's the circus.com in Portland, Oregon. Uh, that's the Polish spelling, by the way, because the owners of our building are of Polish descent and they call the building Cirque. So we're the circus, and I ran away and joined the circus. And I am a totally stable genius. <laughs> if any of you have a problem with my saying that, I would just say, I'm as much of a totally stable genius as anyone else who feels the need to constantly claim that they're a totally stable genius. <laughs> uh, however, I'm not necessarily a React Native or NPM genius. I, I played a bit with React Native, and I'd done some React stuff uh, prior to joining the circus. I love that saying, I joined the circus. Uh, and I, I knew of Node and NPM, and I'd done some Express stuff and such, and I downloaded and used NPM packages great, but I'd never done an NPM package myself before. These are all the ways you can get in touch with me. And a bit about me, I tend to be, on my off hours, a streaming binge junkie. That's why the picture of uh, the doctor, Jody Whitaker, up, is up there. Uh, I am a bread baker. I have my own sourdough starter at home I bake bread with, though I'm thinking now I need to feed that starter. And uh, I'm a bicyclist. That bottom thing is me at the end of the Seattle to Portland ride three years ago. And I am a beer snob. No PBR for me. Thank you. So before we get into the main part of the talk, I want to ask you guys to participate in a little experiment with me. You don't have to. Uh, participate, folks, if you don't want to. Uh, but if you do, I'm going to ask you to get out your smart device, be it an iPhone or Android or a tablet or an iPad or whatever, and I'm going to ask you to lock the screen so it goes blank, and then close your eyes. With your eyes closed, just by touch, unlock the screen. Now, if you have one of those fingerprint sensors, that should be easy. If you've got like the modern, uh, it checks your face, uh, you can just turn it toward your face with your eyes closed if you want. Then once you think you have it open, try and do a simple task. Open a message, an SMS message, and try to start typing in an SMS message or a notepad. Or uh, open your mail, find the icon that opens your mail and begin to try and touch and see where messages are. How's that going for everybody? <laughs> I thought so. So what's this all about? I'm here to describe to you a new NPM package for React Native that we made, because we created the app in React Native for a, a keyboard for Braille's six key input. I'm going to talk about uh, how we get the, got here or why we created this in particular. I'm going to talk about the road to getting there, which is, as Sir Paul said, a long and winding road, many twists and turns, and now with even more crushing defe defeats, yet triumphant victories. And I'm also going to talk about the future of it and how you folks can contribute to this open source NPM package. Uh, before I go any further, 
Um, uh, Marcy mentioned accessibility, and I'm very much, especially since working on this, before this, me and knowing accessibility and A11Y, not much. And in fact, I haven't worked very much on that part of this product that we're working on. Uh, and so it, when people said, well, as you're talking to be about um, accessibility in A11Y, my first reaction was to go, no! Uh, because I just didn't know that much about it, except there has been a person, he's an intern, working on that part on the app, and I will talk about it a bit later. Um, I also, I didn't want to talk about it much because it's kind of known that React Native is very, or used to be very limited in how it handled accessibility in A11Y. It was extremely limited, and people weren't happy about it. Um, but then I, I did a little bit more searching. I thought, well, maybe we can incorporate some of that in here. Um, I wanted to call everyone's attention to an article I recently read. It's on LinkedIn. It's written by a Ms. Ziki Chen. She's a computer science and business major at UC Berkeley. And for a few months, she was an intern at Facebook working on React Native, particularly on the accessibility API for React Native. And she talks about in this, uh, that's the link to the article right up there. Uh, so feel free to look it up. It's a very good article. She talks about what the original limitations were that people were complaining about. She talked about the design decisions when she was an intern that the team made and how they implemented them and how you can begin to use them now. So I highly recommend this article, and I think we're going to be going over it and implementing a lot into our app. So how do we get here? Well, first, uh, before I uh, ran off and joined the circus, as I said, uh, mid 2017 to late 2017, uh, Dr. Samuel Sinat and Dr. Holly Lawson, their PhDs at Portland State University, they, uh, uh, Sam runs the Universal Design Lab, that's the links for all that, and they wanted to uh, create an app to help uh, families and allies and friends of people who are sight impaired learn Braille, right? At least beginning, that was what our uh, goal was with this app, and this is the little website that we created for them. That last link on the last slide goes to this site. This is sort of announcing the app. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Sam has gotten his enterprise accounts for Google Play and um, iOS now, and as soon as he gets the marketing materials, this app should be released on the app stores in the next few weeks. Um, and so we were going to create this app for them, and this was created based on mock-ups by the owner of our agency, Juan Fernandez. He's an amazing graphic artist. And, uh, he, uh, and so we were going to begin work on this, and then I was hired in February of this year, 2018, to uh, do some web work with them, but mostly to really laser focus on this React Native app for PSU. So, uh, of course, um, I was just getting my feet wet in React Native and such, so um, I couldn't do this alone. That's my CTO and boss, and he's also a co-owner and senior partner at the circus. That's Ryan Anderson. I hope next year or in the next couple of years he does a call for proposal here because the guy's a freaking genius. He really is. I rely on him for so much, and I really admire him. Um, also, that's the intern I was talking about from PSU, uh, Dr. Sennett, Sam, he, uh, he found him. He's a computer science major at PSU, and he's helping us. And he's the one who began to incorporate a lot of the accessibility so some of the commands within the app could be spoken. And then there's me, working diligently every day in, uh, on the app. So what were some of the requirements of this app? Well, it needed to run on smartphones and tablets, on Apple iOS and Google Android. They wanted running everywhere, on you know, tablets, iPads, everywhere. And so, of course, uh, Ryan, the CTO, and the rest of us went, well, let's do React Native. It right once, runs on both iOS and Android forever, right? Right? We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, it needs to be responsive on, on all sizes of screens and phones and tablets. It needs to have interactive exercises that can be logged and people get awards or, or the, the uh, admin on the back end can see what uh, exercises and courses people have completed. And that included a keyboard 
to input six dot braille characters, which is what you see in the universal English braille. There have been two grades of that, by the way. There's been grade one, and now we're on grade two uh, of UEB. The braille input should not cover over parts of the screen in the app with which the user is trying to interact. Just like when you bring up a keyboard in Notepad, as you'll see me do in a moment, uh, it should not cover the whole screen. You should be able to see what you're typing. And you should be able to touch all the buttons in the Braille cell at once and make any Braille character in the six dots that is possible using multi-touch. And it should all be a seamless experience, right? And I know some of you who know accessibility in A11Y much better than I are going, wait, Fada, doesn't Apple iOS and Google Android have similar accessibility controls for the sight impaired? Well, yeah. Google Android has a thing called Brailleback. It's not part of the OS. It's a separate free app you can download. And uh, the problem with that is it expects you to have your own external Braille keyboard. They make these accessibility keyboards for people who are sight impaired who want to type Braille. Maybe you've seen some people use them. Uh, uh, I will say they are kind of expensive. Um, the Android also has a thing called Gboard, which is their internationalization, the ability to type in many different languages using the Android Gboard. And someone uh, in a forum or in some Stack Overflow post I read said, and it can do Braille. I said, really? And I started going through and looking up everything I could find, Google searches and Stack Overflow about Gboard, and I could not find a Braille library for it. I could be wrong. I, don't, I'm, I fully admit that I don't know that much about it. So if someone knows if there's an ability to do Braille through Gboard, please let me know. Uh, Apple iOS, it's built, baked into the system uh, with the accessibility controls through the general control panel and with voiceover. So I'm going to give you an example of this now. Uh, I'm going to unplug here and plug this into my phone so you'll see my phone screen. They're going to need to turn this off for a second so because I don't want to cause seizures in the audience from the screen flashing. All right. And let me get to the app I want. So I have it set up. I, uh, I have it set up already. So three clicks on the power button uh, brings up uh, voiceover. And then using the rotor, which you can set in those accessibility controls in general settings, uh, you can switch to a keyboard. So just like a regular keyboard, you have these things. And you, but you can still see your screen above, et cetera. But now I'm going to turn voiceover on. I'm going to hold this up so you guys can hear it. Voice over on, notes, note, text field, is editing, character mode. Let's do a new one. There we go. And now here's the... Voice over on, notes, note, braille screen input, All right. landscape, There's home the... button to the left, tabletop mode, contract A, B, C, D. All right. Voice over off. That's a good example of that. And I, I am now going to switch back so that I can continue. And if you're not a sight impaired person who's had to get used to using a device with sort of <laughs> OK Google or Alexa or Siri barking back at you constantly, that can be a bit disconcerting and annoying. Right? And we wanted something that was a little bit more seamless. So I said, let's make it an NPM package and open source it. And they said, yeah. And we were all excited because we're, now I'm making my first NPM package. And they're going to help me. And this is going to be great, right? And uh, so the, here it is, the NPM package. Uh, that's the link if you want to go take a look at it. It's up there. It's got a readme for it. And here is the related GitHub repository. Now, the GitHub repository. Um, has one thing that the package doesn't, and that's if you see at the top, there's a little app thing. That's an expo app that allows you to test and see the thing working. And I'm going to unplug this again and plug it into the phone. And we're going to see the expo app working. Uh, this is silent because the app itself 
doesn't have any, uh, I mean, the uh, package itself doesn't have accessibility, but you can add that in into whatever app you put it in. So here it is working, hopefully. There it is. All right, so there you go, the Braille 6 key input in action. There's an A, there's a B, there's a C, there's a D, there's an E, all right? You can delete or you can clear the whole thing, you know? And that's doing just standard Braille. All right, I'm gonna switch back now. So, there we go. Um, that was working great uh, so far, and we got the interface and the touch working fairly well, and we were testing it in Expo on iOS, and it was looking, and we figured, oh, it'll be the same on Android, and so everything's ready, right? Uh, but not quite. There is, as you go between platforms, uh, like I said, many twists and turns. Uh, initial tests on Apple iOS said, hey, okay, ready. So we were kind of feeling, yeah, let's go. MVP, ship it. Until we began to test on Android. Not so much. Uh, some of the problems we initially had. Oh my God, Braille fonts. Um, those who know Braille, you'll, that, that's, let me see, A-B-A-C-U-S. That's the word abacus right there. Um, I have learned a bit since February. I wanted to show you that over here, what we did was um, I did a kind of test in CodePen and kind of shown all sorts of different fonts uh, working. Uh, we have uh, Source Sans, Simbraille, which comes from the American Publishing House for the Blind with their uh, Braille, Braille Blaster program they have for translating Braille. We tried Source Sans and Apple Gothic and other things that had Braille in them. And uh, what Holly, uh, Dr. Holly Lawson wanted was these wonderful little things called ghost dots. And she wanted the Braille large enough, of course, on phone screens and tablets that people could read it, it especially if they weren't fully sight impaired, but mostly sight impaired. Um, so, okay, we, we, we did some testing through this. And even though these all look great here, uh, what we found is some of them just don't show up with the ghost bot dots, even if we do React Native link of the font once we import it. Um, uh, even if we do that, some just don't show the goats dots. The one that worked on both uh, Apple iOS and Android, Apple Braille. Once you React Native link it, it worked great. Uh, so let's go back here. So that problem solved. Um, then we had uh, the responsiveness in portrait versus landscape and different screen sizes. For different screen sizes, if it wasn't doing well with the React Native style sheets, um, uh, no matter what we did, we had to make certain helper functions to check, is this an iPhone 10, which is a much larger um, uh, dots per inch screen? Is this, uh, is this an iPad? We did little helper functions, and then we would redo, redo the uh, uh, style sheets based on that. And I also found this wonderful package, React Native Responsive Style Sheet. To show you in our app that working, here is uh, like the style sheets down here. First you import it, once it's in your uh, uh, package.json, you uh, import it uh, using um, uh, the import statement up here, and then down here at the very bottom, we have the style sheet, there's, um, there's the regular normal styles using the responsive style sheet create. Um, and then below there are the responsive styles. If your um, normal styles are what you want in portrait, you can just leave the, port port, uh, the portrait as empty objects and then any variations in landscape you can put in there that will register. And I'm gonna unplug and plug back in again just to show you real quick. So with this in, you can see it working like that. And that's the React Native style sheet. Unplugging again. Thank you. Oh, you didn't see it. I'm, I apologize. Do this quick. Let's wait till they, it's plugged back in. 
There we go. All right, so here. There you go. Everyone see that? All right. Thanks for keeping me honest. I'm going to unplug again. I have to tell them that so that you don't see a whole bunch of flicker screen. All right, I'm plugged back into this. There we are. So that problem solved. Um, so then there was the uh, question of uh, you know, being able to touch all the buttons at once to make all the Braille characters. And of course, we all know that as multipass. No, multi-touch. Um, so there are two choices here, a couple. Uh, the first was, and I'll show this to you, the React Native Gesture Responder System API. Here it is. And it starts out pretty good, and I'm reading through it, and my, my boss, Ryan, the genius, uh, saying, you should use Gesture Responder System for multi-touch. And I kept reading through, and I saw these props that you attach to the view in React Native. And I'm going, yeah, but there's not many examples. In fact, there's no examples. And, uh, oh, and I got to learn location Y and location X and geometry math. And I started to get scared. And I said, there's got to be an easy way to do, easier way to do this. So I came back here, and I, I did some searching in Google and Stack Overflow. And I found, oh, well, JavaScript itself has touch things. There's the touch start, touch move, touch n that you can add to an add event listener with a callback function of what you want it to do. Or uh, in modern JavaScript, you can do on touch start, on touch move, on touch end. And I tried those. And in the Expo app and on iOS, working great. And we're like, yes, OK, don't have to deal with that gesture responder stuff at all. Yay, I did it. And then we tried testing on Android. And it's not React Natives and the Facebook folk or Android well. It's just Android handles touch gestures and multi-touch gestures in a different way and different heuristics than iOS does, to which my boss, Ryan, went, duh. And he said, remember when I said you should maybe try the gesture responder system? So uh, we, so I, uh, pardon me, uh, jumping ahead. So we did, and I'm just going to really quick show you the gesture responder system as part of this. It's so in the view here, this is the enclosing view around all these little Braille input components we made here. Um, we have the, in the six key input uh, as part of the package, we have the view. Um, views have layout, and you can do a callback function on layout, which allows you to get locations of everything on the screen. I'll show you that in a sec. And here are the gesture responder stuff. It's on, uh, on start should uh, set responder, on responder move, on responder release, just props on view. Doesn't have to be a touchable view or a touchable opacity or anything like that. It can be just a regular view that's now set to respond to multi-touches. Here are the functions I was telling you about. Here's the on layout that we call. The on layout gets a native event which contains a layout that has all sorts of stuff and then we use uh, a, a layout measure method that uh, React Native supplies, and we do a call back to that and say, take that stuff in the native object. It's going to have a, the x and y of the component itself. Where it starts, it's going to have its width and height, and it's going to have the absolute page x and page y on the screen where it's located. And then we put that into state variables, just what we need. The page x goes to x, page y goes to y, width and height. And, uh, the, and you can see that's our state variable right there. Um, so down here in the move callback, this is what happened. We take a native event there that records the change touches. We say uh, get, get that, uh, that, that x, y width and height we put into the state variable of layout, uh, create a test array, and if there's anything already in the test array, put it in there. Uh, and then we say change touches uh, based on their position in the, uh, as we loop through in the array, go into page x and page y in a constant here. We uh, create these variables and set them to zero. And then this is something my genius CTO came up with. He basically, this is the, he helped me out doing the uh, y and x math. So if this, uh, this is the y up and down. So if it's uh, this much, 
uh, it's the third button. If it, uh, it's the third set of row of third buttons. If it's this much, it's the row of second buttons. If it's this much, it's the row of first buttons. And down here, this is the X. So if it's uh, this, it's three. If it's this one, it's the ones on the left, one, the ones. And then we put all that into a thing we call button touch array, and then we do a switch on it and say, if it's one, one, that's the one button on the left. If it's one, two, that's the two button on the right, et cetera, all the way down to six. And that's how we did the multi-touch. And so I was very excited to learn that and very grateful that he made me do the hard work and go all the way through that. All right? There is one thing left uh, that we ran into. Uh, most human beings, uh, not all, but most human beings are born with how many fingers on each hand? Five. Five, right. And so what is a limitation on both iOS and Android of the total number of fingers that can touch a screen at once for phones? Five. That's all it'll take on phones. Tablets and iPads will take more. But the phones, that's it. And that really ticked us off because in Universal English Braille Grade 2, there is an all six character that you need to do as a modifier to describe other characters in the contracted Braille. And, but, and I'm going to unplug and show you really quick, we found a workaround thanks to Ryan insisting that I do the hard work and do the gesture responder system. I'm plugged in. And what we can do, because we're using gesture responder, we do one, two, three, four, five, right? But now it won't take any more. I'm hitting six, nothing happened. But then I can lift off of five. It, five is still part of the array that we're building. I touch six with that finger, release, there's the full thing. So we did find a good workaround for it. Going to unplug again. All right, so finishing up. So I think we've all learned something here today, don't you? Oh, there it goes. There we go. Wait, that slide doesn't look quite right. That's better. All right, so there's this open source package uh, for six key Braille UEB input in React Native. Uh, it's an alternative solution to the OS platform accessibility in apps. Um, as I said, the road to making things work the same in both React Native and Apple iOS and Google Android is not the happy rainbow sparkle playland you'd think. And it's open source, so we're saying please fork and contribute. If you're going to contribute directly to this project, our email is on the GitHub and the, and the NPM repository, and we ask you write us first to make sure, as, as maintainers, we want to make sure it's the direction we want the package to go. But if you want to fork and use it for something else, that's what you could do. For instance, we made this for React Native. Maybe you want to fork and uh, refactor the code for just regular React for the web. Maybe you want to re uh, just read it and go over it and do something similar for Angular, for Vue. Hey, Yehuda was here yesterday for Ember, you know? Uh, we, you know, there's all sorts of things. Uh, one of my next projects after we do the release for like 1.1 or 1.5 is in landscape on tablets, we want to have the fingers buttons at an angle, because that's the way most people will be touching the screen. So we want to make it easier for them. But wait, there's more. That app itself, UEB Prep, we want to make it into an open source framework for any sort of education, training, handbook, et cetera, experience. It's got a fr the front end React Native app, and it has a back end admin which has a front end for the web that's in React Native Web, and we use Storybook to check the components there. And the back end of it is using AWS Lambda with, with serverless, which is a Node.js implementation. Uh, it can, and that's what we write our APIs in, is in Node on serverless. Uh, can be configured to contain training exercises and media-rich video and audio experiences. I could also say if you're like, if you're like with uh, Treehouse and you want to do uh, an app where people finish and then if they want to take the next course, uh, they have to pay for it, you can incorporate e-commerce into it also. 
Uh, Universal Design Lab, as you can see on the far right, has already got a new skin on it for other accessibility stuff they're going to do. And one of our big clients at the Circus Inc. is also Hood to Coast. We do all their websites. They don't just do the one Hood to Coast race. They do races all over the world, all right, including in China uh, and other places. And uh, we made the app for them using this framework. We reskinned it. We gave them their own back end. They put in uh, all sorts of uh, information for their a uh, handbook, and we helped them by going out with a drone team, and we photographed some of the major legs that they had video of with drones, and that's all in that app. That app was done in a little over three weeks, just using this framework and the skins. It's amazing. So thanks. That's about this, and I want to say, uh, I about three or four years ago, I was at the Portland one. I'm wearing the Portland hoodie I got back then. I'm a very happy Cascadia JS, but this is my first time speaking at Cascadia JS. JS, I'm very happy and very honored to be here. Thank you very much.